everyone and welcome to the daily newspaper analysis which is brought to you by Lawseco. I hope you're all doing fine and please pardon me for the grainy voice that I have today guys. Please bear with me. <clears throat> so today we have an editorial for a discussion and the title of this article is The Injustice of Exceptionalism. So this again talks about the release that has taken place in the Bilkis Bano case and how uh, this exceptionalism really is not justified when it comes to such victims called like we have the Bilkis Bano case. Then we have the news update and legal news for the day. So the innocent men who were sentenced to life imprisonment in 2008, we all know, for the gang rape of Bilkis Banu. And we need to remember the cruelty that they had, uh, guys, that she was even pregnant then. And then they even murdered her family members in 2002. They were released this week from a jail in Gujarat. Now, a special court uh, uh, from the CBI had sentenced these men to life imprisonment in 2008. Now, while their release itself is being frowned upon, there are also subsequent celebrations of this particular release, which is definitely making the matter even further unsettling. Now, guys, uh, we need to consider here that uh, definitely when we come to the pardoning power of the president and the governor. And here, you guys, you need to tell me the exact articles uh, when it comes to the Constitution of India about the pardoning powers of the president and the uh, governor. If you know, let me know in the comment section below. So when we talk about this, guys, so it is important for us to also understand that we need to create such situations where the victim or the person who was actually, you know, uh, treated so badly as in this case, Bilkis Banu, are we really doing justice to her or victims like her when we are releasing such people out from the jail? Now, the argument of individualizing questions of punishment and reformation is a valid one. Definitely. See, however, the same should not come at a price of offense based exclusions while considering remission and premature release. See, we need to understand here, guys, that we are uh, taking in care that we are giving the rights to the victims as well. But are we also being justified to the person against whom the crime was committed in the very first place? That we need to understand very clearly. Now, it is true that the apex court has agreed that the remission is a right to life and it is not a privilege extended, but a right that can be enforced, right? So you cannot just claim it as a matter of right, but of course you can enforce it as right, but it is not a privilege that you will have only. Now, but at the same time, the same cannot settle all the questions of justice. Further, it should be noted here that rape is often used as a weapon against the social and economic minority and hence considerations like intimidation from majority community and often from police needs to be actively taken into account. You all remember the recent rape that was there of Hathras that had taken place that was also against a minority. So many a times it has been seen that the, that the majority people or the people from majority community, they try to assert their power onto the minority by committing rape against the women of those groups, which definitely is not a good symbol. Then Bilkis Banu has to face an Islamophobic society on the top of watching the perpetrators walk free. Now, can you understand that here she belongs to a religion that is a minority religion in the country? And there are definitely all kinds of people that we find around. There are people who are Islamophobic, who are not really fond of Islam as a religion. And that is why they will, she will be further victimized is a great chance that we might have to see over here. And this, you know, what would put a salt on the wounds over here is that when will she see her perpetrators and rapists and the murderers of her family members walk free in the society. So when the executive has otherwise made the choice to exclude this category of offenders from the benefit of remission or premature release, Releasing these men from the majority community who gang raped Bilkis Banu and murdered her family members during a communal riot is an, definitely an act of exceptionalism. And we need to understand that if at all there was a general rule that such category of people would not be excluded, then what has made the executive to bring out this exceptionalism in, in this particular case? So the merits definitely have to be settled over here. Now, it is this exceptionalism that lies at the core of injustice in this case, which needs to be pondered upon. Now, let's see what do we have for news updates for the day. Firstly, HDFC Bank opens first all-female branch in uh, Kore Kode, in Kore Kode. So in a first, HDFC Bank opened its all-women branch in Kore Kode in Northern Kerala. So the branch was inaugurated by the city corporation uh, mayor, Bina Philip. And according to the bank, women constituted 21.7% of the workforce as of March 31, 2022. Secondly, Para World Cup, Rahul shoots down gold. So on another fruitful day for India, Rahul Jakhar took uh, the individual gold in P5, that is mixed 10 meter air pistol standard SH1 finals and helped the country win the team gold at the shooting para sport world cup in uh, Chatterix in France. 
Thirdly, Sadhbhavana Divas. The birth anniversary of India's former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi is celebrated as Sadhbhavana Divas, a rather very important piece of information. And or even, you know, you can call it as the Harmony Day that is today on 20th August. The day is marked with the objective to promote peace, national integration and communal harmony among all Indians. Fourthly, IOT, that is Internet of Things Performance Framework made by IIT Jodhpur. So researchers from the IIT, that is Indian in, in Institute of Technology, Jodhpur, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, and IIT Kharagpur have performed cutting edge research in the area of Internet of Things. For you, uh, for easier understanding of Internet Things, uh, Internet of Things, guys, it is basically various kinds of appliances and things that we can directly control through Internet based devices. For example, we can switch on and off the AC, television, geysers in our homes, even if we are far away and, uh, you know, we can control all of these things using Internet connection through our phones. So all of these things are called as Internet of Things. Now, the team has developed architectures and algorithms to enhance the efficiencies of data collection and transmission associated with IoT devices and applications. Now, let's see what do we have for legal updates today. Firstly, prosecution under the PMLA, that is the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, not possible after the accused is acquitted of scheduled offense, says the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court reiterated that a person who has been acquitted, that has been completely released of scheduled offense, cannot be prosecuted under the P Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. And this was held in the case of Pravati Kolur versus State by Directorate of Enforcement. Secondly, maintenance petition under Section 125 of the Criminal Procedure Code and is covered by res judicata. Party claiming change in circumstances can't file a fresh plea but can move under Section 127 CRPC, according to the Delhi High Court. This was held in the case of Sunita and another versus Vijay Pal, Aka, Mohammed, Sabi and another. This was all for today. We hope you liked today's session. If you did, please like it and you may subscribe to our channel as well. If you wish to download the PDF of today's slides, you can join our Telegram channel. The link is there in the description box below or you can also scan this QR code that you can see on your screens right now. Thank you so much.